Hi guys, uh, so we have lovely Joanna here today with us and uh, today's session is going to be all about uh, eyeliners. Um, I understand that eyeliner is pretty much the most basic thing that you apply in a makeup, but that's the, that's the key word actually, basic. Uh, you, you can't just take it for granted that an eyeliner is a basic makeup. There's a lot of um, precision that goes into a basic makeup to make it look um, spotless. And eyeliners are something that you always need to have practiced several times before you get it right, even if it is the most basic of eyeliners. Uh, now, but Joanne, I'm going to get started. And this, this uh, entire session is not going to be about any graphic liners or, you know, well thought of and planned lines and angles and none of that. This is going to be a straightforward approach to how to use eyeliners to the greatest effect. And let me tell you something, uh, a little makeup goes a long way. Um, and if you've noticed the trends in the recent past, uh, I'm not talking about what's happening on Instagram and stuff like that, where makeup's just gone out of the box, and it's, uh, which is great for expression. But as far as uh, clarity is concerned, as far as the red carpet is concerned, as far as beauty in its truest form is concerned, a little bit goes a long way. And eyeliners kind of add to that uh, basic, classic, timeless uh, look every single time. So this entire session, I'm going to talk about liners and take you through a variety of basic liners because as we're getting started in makeup, you don't want to jump to the 10th step first. You want to start at the very beginning and do that really well because then the progression becomes more calculated, it becomes easier. So there's so many things to learn from basic liners and that's where we're going to get started. Uh, I'm going to begin with just the top liner. Uh, the most basic of liners. I mean, this is something that everybody does. Even if you're not a professional, you do it at home. You help your cousins do it, teenagers do it. So everybody does a basic eyeliner, but there's still something to it. There's a lot to it, actually. So I'm going to get started. Um, so uh, this, these videos are dealing with people that are interested in makeup per se, uh, whether it's be, uh, to wear it on yourselves or help others wear it, or you take it on as a professional. Uh, so. Let's break some myths first. Um, applying a liner does not mean that you only use a liner product, all right? So yes, you may use a liner, uh, so to speak. But having said that, as a professional, you employ several tools to make the makeup effective. Okay, so if I were to do a basic makeup uh, liner, I would use a liner, but then being me, I mean, I developed a style of my own makeup, so I would use a liner brush to soften out the edges. I would use a black eyeshadow or a matching eyeshadow to kind of soften certain spots that I don't like or certain sharp edges that I don't like. So don't feel shy to, uh, to experiment, even in that small limited space, even in the tiny limited space that a liner gives you. You can use any tool you prefer. You can use anything to enhance the makeup that you prefer. Don't stop at the product itself, understand? So those are things to learn as you become a makeup artist and those are the things that you will learn and you will uh, actually develop a style of your own and anything is okay, everything goes, as long as you take the road to achieve a beautiful makeup. So um, first thing to keep in mind is assess the shape of a person's eye, okay? And you know, please look straight ahead. Uh, well, Joanna has gorgeous eyes, as most people do have gorgeous eyes and different shapes shouldn't uh, change the way you uh, do the makeup. The approach could be different, but the makeup is always going to have to be beautiful. Uh, as far as Joanna is concerned, she has beautiful eyes and I, I don't have to tweak the shape much. But having said that, I also need to know that I can't go too far out of the guidelines that are presented by her features. I wouldn't want to take the eyeliner past her eyebrow. I'd like to keep it well within the, the lines of the eyes. And that is the basic makeup. So in a basic eyeliner, what you would first do is make your model look straight ahead okay in my case this would be my straight ahead so I'm just going to make her look at me because that is the final perception you get of the makeup and I'm going to actually draw using a felt liner remember that these these are guidelines this is never going to finish till it's completely done and completely done means a lot of tweaking it takes a lot of patience so to get started, I just want to see where I want the final fall of her eyeliner on her eyes. And the reason I'm doing this with the eyes open is because that is the final perspective that you would get. You look at people with your eyes open, people look at you with their eyes open. 
So you want to know whether, how the liner and the shape looks with the eyes open, not with the eyes closed. So that's your beginning. So basically at the very end of her lash line, her upper lash line, I've drawn two lines. Okay, so that would give me a kind of guideline as to how to apply very, very basic eyeliner on her. I'm going to switch to a gel. Uh, no particular reason why. For me, I like to use gel uh, eyeliners, especially when you're taking time, because they give you play time. If you, if you were to use liquid liners, you know, more often than not, two things happen. They dry almost immediately upon contact with the eye, which means you have no time to tweak with the product. So, gels give you the extra time you need to work and play and settle things and balance things. It gives you that much time to play with, so I prefer gels. But having said that, you, you should use anything that you're comfortable with. Okay, like I said, I'm using a gel liner and a really thin eyeliner brush. You can, you can take one that absolutely works for you. Uh, I'm just going to take a swipe of the liner evenly along the brush. Okay, so here's what I noticed while doing Joanna's makeup and that you should do that with your client as well. So I noticed at the end of her lash line, you'll find that this lid is a bit wider than this lid. This lid droops heavier, this has more room. So think of all those things when you're doing the final tweaking because right now I'm not going to do anything about it. But I guess when I finish, there's going to be one eyeliner that appears thinner. That will appear thinner than this because this will appear thicker because of the fall of her, um, you know, the crease. We don't want to go into those details right now. It's largely about uh, applying the liner. I always prefer starting at the outer end simply because it gives you a kind of guideline as to how, how thick you'd like to go on your eyeliner. So drawing a kind of a V. Just make sure you fill in and go almost to the root of the lashes. So I'm starting with a very basic winged eyeliner. And it's not a heavy wing, it's just a basic wing. This kind of a uh, Liner is uh, largely used to tie up uh, an eye makeup, uh, not really to pronounce or enhance it. So this is largely to tie up and finish off an eye makeup or to wear it by itself like this. And yes, eyeliners do take a while. They're easy to do, but they take a while for balance and precision. So take your time, there's no rush. And if there is a rush, you can do this faster as well. So I'm just going to sweep the liner all the way into her lids, and across the lids actually. All the while make sure that all the, everything's connected, there's no gaps in the skin from the folds. Keep taking a look at her, straight up. I personally prefer taking the color as close or almost into the lashes if possible, particularly if there's no other makeup then this gives a sense of strength to the makeup. It kind of ties it up really clean. I don't like to leave these naked little spots that you get normally here. That's also very important to keep filling in. Take your liner right in to the inner corner of the eye.
So once you finish, you can see what you want to do with the eye. Uh, I would like this line really sharp here. So I'm going in with a little extra product and the tip of my liner brush. There you go. So that's largely it. Uh, and all I'm going to do with the next eye, the second eye, is kind of bring it all together, make sure that the uh, shapes are similar. Um, remember that everything co that comes in pairs are not going to be exactly the same looking. They're actually quite different. Um, and that's where the, the balancing act, so to speak, comes into play. You always have to pay attention to it. Now take a deep breath because sometimes you can get thrown and frazzled. But having said that, it's not difficult to achieve and with practice and regular use of uh, you know, lining, it shouldn't be very difficult to uh, gauge uh, how to do it really quickly. So I'm just going to do a quick sweep. I will balance it all out together once I'm done with the basic application. Everybody's uh, eyelids fold while uh, sweeping a product across. So be careful while you do that. I mean, if you miss a spot, just go back in and fill. All right, so here I'm just kind of finishing up and balancing both the eyes. Not so much creating any extra shape or anything. Uh, I like uh, to keep cleaning, you know, not, not fraying my brush, but I like to keep cleaning uh, my eyeliner brush on a bit of tissue, only so it doesn't get too stiff in the course of all the playing around. No, um, it does tend to get very stiff. I like the bristles to be easy and move so I can work, continue to work. Of course, you can keep spare brushes, uh, which is ideal. But just in case you're stuck with one, then uh, I would recommend that you keep it, you know, easy to be uh, bend, make, it, make sure it bends easily. So I've come to the end of this and I want to balance the two. Kind of pulling that out. So I'm just finishing up. I want the, the ends to be a bit matching and sharp. Okay, so basically what I was doing is just tying up both the sides and I did go back and use the felt liner to give these ends a very sharp kind of 
tight finish. Again, of course, you can choose the kind of finish that you want. Uh, you can also smoke this part out using an eyeshadow. Just whatever you do, just remember to balance at uh, any time, both the sides, so you have a very even looking uh, makeup. There's no product on my concealer brush, but I'm just kind of clearing up any grayness that may have, you know, fallen from all the blending and touching. So that's pretty much it. That's a very basic liner. Now here's a little trick that I think uh, makes even such a simple liner very effective. What I'm going to do now is in the event that your makeup only requires this much eye makeup and no further eye makeup, just remember that in photography what happens is once the lights are on, everything goes kind of flat. So you still want to add dimension to her eye. So right now, although she's, she's fantastic looking as she is, uh, what this makeup could do is take a little dimension in the eye. So I like to use very transition colors like this. Uh, clearly it's a very well used color. You can see that I like it a lot. I tend to use it a lot in my makeup. All I'm doing is taking it on an eyeshadow blending brush. I'm not really applying an eyeshadow. What I'm doing is, keep your eyes open please. All I'm doing is adding a certain amount of dimension to her crease. And you'll see that it's a very natural looking color. I'm not really doing an eye makeup here. All I'm doing is once you have a, something like an eyeliner, you want to add one other dimension to the eye so it looks more uh, put together, so to speak. And the skin kind of has two dimensions. There's the platter parts of her skin and there's the more curved parts of her skin. So just add a little bit of color into the crease with a very light hand. It's not a very deliberate application. It's just a suggestion of a crease. And if your makeup, if this is all you're going to do in your makeup, just make sure that you have that transition between brow bone and eyelid. And of course, you finish off with the mascara. The reason I'm not going to do a mascara right now is because I'm going to continue with this. Uh, right now, we have a very basic eyeliner. I'm going to do a transition from this into other eyeliner styles. And once we're fully done is when I'm going to tie it all together with uh, mascara. I don't uh, particularly like loading on product because I think that's more detrimental to a makeup than beneficial. Anyway, so that's a little added tip for you if mascara and eyeshadow are the only thing you're putting on in terms of an eye makeup. And we'll go further shortly. All right, so uh, proceeding from this, I'm going to show you how to do a basic coal application. You might wonder why the hell I am doing that. But he here's what I noticed over the years um, with, with uh, you know, people who asked me how to apply coal. You'll, uh, you'll find a lot of people, you, if you're working as a makeup artist, you'll find a lot of people will come up to you and ask you why their coal doesn't stay put in their eyes. Well, you have to have uh, veritable answers for those uh, questions. So here, here's what I think, all right? Um, here's what I experienced, actually. I find that the lesser amount of coal you put in the eyes, the more likely it is to bleed. There's too little and your eyes are blinking all the time. And blinking your eyes actually uh, enforces motion. So it actually pushes the coal outside of your eyes and makes it come down. So you need to have enough product in there, first, to make an impact. Second, to, to keep the coal in place. So that even if you blinked through the course of a day or the, through the course of an application, the coal needs to stay put. You don't want it to move out. And another way of keeping the coal in place is, of course, I've said this in several videos before for those of you who have been watching my videos. Otherwise, I'll say it again. Um, another way to keep the coal uh, to stay in place is to use a matching eyeshadow to set the powder from below the lash line. So I'm going to show you both of those. And firstly, the application. Again, you can use any color, any kind of coal, waterproof, water resistant, long lasting. That's not the point. The point is how to use a coal to maximum effect. Here's how. First of all, uh, always make sure that if you're applying coal on somebody else, 
make sure that the eyeballs are uh, have very little chance of making contact with the point of your coal. Uh, and even if you did sharpen your coal pencil, make sure that the top of the coal is shaved off. So you kind of get a blunt but sharp enough uh, edge. I'm going to go in. Now to make it easy on the client and yourself, put your finger here so you fold, you allow the lash line, the water line to fold towards you and always encourage your customer to blink. By them holding back a blink is actually going to be detrimental to your makeup. And if you notice, I'm going to go back and forth in very small motions. This way, you would make sure that there is enough product on the waterline. So I'm going back and forth to get enough product. Now, if I went only with in a single line like this, which is what most people tend to do, you don't get enough product into the waterline. I'm gonna show it again on the other eye. So you catch what I'm saying. So if you notice, if you do a single swipe with the coal like that, which most people tend to do, I've seen it over and over again. This is a definite sure shot coal destroyer because there will be no coal in the eye to make any impact. And with a few blinks of the eye, this whatever is little is there in the eye is going to come down and make a very grey, dull eye area. Instead, if you actually worked your coal in, back and forth like this, so you have enough product. If you see the difference between that and this, you can see that the back and forth strokes, the small strokes, make sure that there is enough coal leaving a certain impact on the eye makeup. And also, this with blinking is less likely to travel down. Also, you have enough product in here to be able to control with the application of a powder in case you want to keep it for even longer. So I'm gonna show you that too. So using a black eyeshadow, which is a matching eyeshadow, or you could even use a gray if you don't want it to look too dark, Using a black eyeshadow with a slanted brush such as this, not too much, look up please. All I'm going to do is go underneath and very close to the waterline and place the black there. Not so much to create an impact with the black eyeshadow, but actually to just set the cream of the coal pencil right there at the lash line, at the very base of the lash line. This will actually keep the coal in there a little longer. Of course, there are several formulations available, but for those that cannot take waterproof makeup in their eyes, a lot of people are allergic actually to waterproof makeup uh, for whatever reasons. And you have to obviously respect those needs of a customer as well. So using a powder, you may even use a translucent powder, but the black obviously adds a little extra dimension to your makeup. Just go really close into the base of the lash line and place the powder in such a way that the impact of the coal is actually strengthened and also it doesn't move too much. I'm just going to repeat the same thing on the other eye so you get the gist. Again, hold lightly so the water line turns towards you and go back and forth in very short strokes over the water line very mindfully. Another thing is request your customer always to look on the opposite side of the approach of your pencil so there's very little chance of contact with the eyes. So there you go, you can see a real application of coal which is actually impactful. By using a single sweep of the color you're not going to have any impact, your coal is not going to really jump out as a color or anything. And like I said, chances of smudging are very high. Look up. Now I'm re repeating the eyeshadow uh, step just to kind of set the cream of the pencil. Going really, really close into the lash line and setting the black with a black eyeshadow powder. You may even do this with a translucent powder.
So that's uh, that. Of course, there are several formulations which you can directly apply that will help you uh, have the impact of a coal and which doesn't move for several hours. But in case you do have a product such as this one, like classic uh, pencil, you will probably need to apply this step as well to keep it in place for a few hours.